Me all, Hua An, and good evening to all my warriors and true believers alike. Uh, Turtle Sage here for another fun-filled episode of Combat Commentary on today's episode. Yep, we're going to do something we haven't done in a while. As usual, we don't do this enough. Combat Commentary is going to be another uh, Turtle Sage reviews, alright? And on this episode, we're going to review the movie... The Batman, yes, the Batman, the not not Christian Bale, not Michael Keaton, definitely not anything by Joel Schumacher, but this is the brother from Twilight, the white dude from Twilight, or whatever, um, Robert Pattinson, and it stars him as the Cape Crusader as a younger Batman, and let's start with the bare bones. Holy crap. They did their homework on the action and the martial arts. And let me say this, one of my biggest criticisms about a lot of fight scenes lately in the last few years about martial arts is it's either too much camera shaking, too much CGI, and or too much wire work. No, I want to see a straight up knockdown drag out Fight. And one thing, one thing that I will say is consistent with fighting is fighting is chaos. So in chaos, things happen. There's always that extra variable that no one counts on, right? And in this movie, Robert Pattinson, well, Batman, had to deal with that. He had to deal with the fact that not only are his opponents going to use guns, they're not always going to fight him head up. They're going to set up explosives. They're going to not, they're going to do every dirty trick in the book. They're criminals. It's what they do, right? And so getting to bare bones, I like the fact that even with all of his training, even with all of his gadgetry, his, his body armor, his... his um, laying, scoping out the territory, which, by the way, again, very ninja. Of course, that's Batman's primary fighting style, ninjutsu. We'll get into that later. Batman made mistakes. At times, he would let opponents surround him. He would take hits he shouldn't have. I guess maybe that was an, an effort to, I don't know, maybe, I guess, give the appearance that he is more than a man, which is cool. However, you are a meatbag at the end of the day, and later on in the movie, he learned that hard lesson, because, yes, he, he, got, he constantly got shot. And while he was wearing the armor equivalent of a light armored vehicle, at the end of the day, inside that armor, he used flesh and bone. He used a meat bag. He will feel the concussive force of high caliber rounds, even low caliber at certain points. Now, with that said, this man can take a punch. Now, granted, he never really dealt with any one opponent that was a true physical threat. It's it was more or less at times he would let himself get overwhelmed. He, again, he would let opponents surround him. And if any of you have done martial arts that are watching me for long periods of time, know this, in a fight against multiple opponents, you never let them surround you. You always do the Musashi Miyamoto bit and make, make them, make one uh, opponent be the shield of another, usually the weakest one. That way you can go in a straight line and cut them down when you need to. Book of the Five Rings, pick it up, I, I highly suggest it, and The Art of War. Now, with that said, Batman's fighting styles. He used a lot of boxing, a lot of dirty boxing, definitely a lot of ninjutsu. Again, that's what he does. And... Um, a bit of karate. I saw, yeah, he, he would definitely chop a lot. And this is another thing. Batman wears those gauntlets. 
it would make sense that he would use a martial art like karate, where, where you know, where they do a lot of those hard style blocks, you know, fight like that. Exactly. That makes sense. In fact, one, one of the reasons I like this costume, again, it looked like a combination of uh, like the Dark Knight meets Arkham Asylum. If you ever played the Arkham Asylum games, that's what, what he got. That's what you got. And at times, Batman would get exhausted. He would get tired. And later on in the movie, he got smarter. It reminds me of, uh, I guess I want to say it's like a, a fable of this master swordsman who had three sons. Um, and he would set up basically a pot in the middle, of, uh, on top of the door, and the pot would fall. And he was testing his three sons. The first son was the oldest son. Uh, he he caught he caught the pot. Second son got out of the way of the pot. Third son, when the pot fell on him, he drew his sword and cut the pot down. That was a fable. The master said that. Oh well. My youngest son is the least experienced. He needs a little bit more training. And why do I bring this up? Okay, well, Batman, at times, there was a scene where he would come in, try to get into Oswald Cobblepot, better known as the Penguin, try to get into his hideout with all the gangsters to explore around, right? Okay, first time he comes in is Bruce Wayne. They kind of turn him away or whatever, like, or whatever, and... He comes, the second time he comes in as Batman, starts boxing everybody. Third time he comes in as Batman, he does none of the above. He just sneaks past. And he got to the Penguin and or and, and, and the rest of the gangsters without taking a, 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 a scratch. It's very ninja. Ninjutsu. You only fight when you have to. When you have to fight, you fight to win. Another bit. That, that there was very ninja. He used people as his eyes and ears. Like, literally, literally his eyes. As somebody who wears glasses and contacts, I thought this was really impressive. He had contact lenses that doubled as recording devices. And he had Miss Zoe Kravitz, AKA Catwoman, Selena Kyle, go into that same nightclub, Iceberg Lounge, and had her spy on, on everyone from the mayor, the DA, everyone. I, I like that. So, oh, it's been a week. If you haven't seen this, spoiler alerts. So, either way. Oh, that's another thing. Catwoman. Man, besides the fact that Zoe Kravitz was killing those leather outfits and every other outfit that she was in, the, the fighting that she did was beautiful. But more importantly, it made sense. And, and this is just all around in that movie. The fighting made sense. She is a, a slight build. She's a tiny young woman and use the martial arts, uh, Taekwondo and Capoeira. It makes sense. She's tiny, she's agile. Of course she can do those uh, fighting styles. She's doing those high kicks and she's very agile. She moves like a cat. Now, that said, when she tried that on Batman, you know, a six foot plus, highly trained, uh, muscle bound man in body armor, she immediately got thrown to the ground. <laughs> when she tried it on mafia soldiers, she almost got killed. And that makes sense. Weight classes matter unless you are fighting in a way, i.e. using lethal weapons like, you know, a katana or a hook, a hook knife, you, using martial arts like that, like fighting like Lady Shiva, basically, or, or Deathstroke, then weight classes are like not so much of a thing, but then, then you add in metahumans and that throws the whole weight class bit out the window. But the hyper-realism, she fought well, but when she got into enclosed spaces, she got hurt. She almost got killed. 
And the one, there was one little split second where she was fighting one of Carmine Falcone's uh, mafia soldiers that she slammed his face against a hard surface. She used his strength against him. That's how a woman should fight against guys that are at least 100 pounds heavier than she is. That makes sense. And I love that they're finally doing that because lately Hollywood has this thing that any woman in any action movie, uh, no matter her weight, can outbox a 300 pound man, 200, 300 pound man, and hit her hard because girl power. No, no. I can only suspend disbelief so much. And, and the fact that they're using hyper realism in this, yes. She, she fought, when she fought well, she fought extremely well. When she fought bad, she paid for it. She took hits like anybody else. I'm a, I'm a relatively stocky guy. I, I, I hit someone her size, she's going down. And Batman, likewise, again, when he took certain hits from certain people, yeah, he, he went down. He took a full on rifle round to the chest, he went down because he's a meat bag. He had to inject himself with adrenaline and he got back up fighting, but he was tripping, right? Now, when he got his back, when he was fighting the cops, this is the part where I really thought that was brilliant. He didn't want to hurt the cops, but he let him know if, 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 I, if, if it comes down to it, I will do what I got to do. He got backed up against the wall so he wouldn't let them surround him because then he would have to go full on lethal, right? And and then he, he he would always be hunted. He beat up about three of them. He he dusted them up a little bit, got his back to the wall until Commissioner Gordon could come in and save him. And he talked to him and bake, you know, Commissioner Gordon took a punch and threw the fight or whatever, and he escaped. I thought that was brilliant. Little things like that. That this movie is a kind of a masterclass on how you should do hyper realism and fight scenes. You added the elements of ninjutsu, stealth, um, you added in boxing, uh, jiu-jitsu, karate, taekwondo, capoeira, street brawling, all in all, and, and then you had people make mistakes. You had realism. Pe people get shot, they go down, right? You had all of that mixed up. I think all action movies should take this formula from here on out. If they want to be good. Now, if you're doing the standard metahuman power, superpowered uh, beings like the Avengers or whatever, okay, you can you can get leeway. But if you have Batman or John Wick or Punisher, you've got to have stuff like that. Or Daredevil. Yes, that makes sense. And so that's just my take on it. Now, going forward, I hope that... While I did love the, the aspect of Batman being a detective, and I really think they should show that a lot more, I would like to see more often than not Batman deal with people that are actual legit physical threats. Bane in The Dark Knight Rises was excellent. Okay, let's go even further than that. Deathstroke. An actual mercenary, a, a, a someone who is as well trained as he is, and please, Warner Brothers, for the love of God, you have all an entire Hong Kong cinema. You have people across the pond that you can pay top dollar. Zhang Ziyi is is alive and waiting. Let her play Lady Shiva for the love of God. She was made for that role. If you don't know who Lady, Lady Shiva is, she's basically the baddest bitch in, in all of hand-to-hand -hand combat of DC. This chick is like, with, as far as somebody without superpowers, she is it. Ain't nobody fucking with her. Not Bronze Tiger, not uh, any of the Robins, definitely not Batman on, on, on he has to be having an extremely good day. Not Ra's al Ghul, not Bane, not maybe Deathstroke because Deathstroke has a healing factor. But yeah, you hand to hand, she is it. She's it. And I hope they, they bring her in. 
And please, for the love of God, leave out the wire food. We don't need that. We need real kung fu, real anything, real martial arts. I love realism because that 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 will draw me in. That is like, oh, this is an action action movie. And so, with that said, if you like my review and you want to see more, press that like button, ring that bell icon, share this with your homies, and again, watch as much as you like. So, with that said. Turtle Sage signing out. Sai Chen.